Cheryl Love always thought her husband Bobby was hiding something. Then, 31 years into their marriage, the FBI and police stormed into their Brooklyn apartment. Bobby Love was actually Walter Miller, an escaped convict. His crime, armed robbery. His sentence, 25 to 30 years in a North Carolina prison. After his escape, he'd moved to New York, changed his name, and started a family. The 2015 arrest landed Bobby behind bars for a year, testing the couple's love and commitment. In their book, The Redemption of Bobby Love, the two share how honesty, forgiveness, and faith can lead to true freedom from the past. An incredible story. Bobby and Cheryl Love are with us now via Skype, and we welcome them to the 700 Club. Good to have you with us today on the program. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. I want to say we've all agreed this is a movie. I hope you've got that in the making. It's an incredible story. Let's go back to January of 2015. After nearly 40 years on the run, more than 30 years of being married, the secret comes out. And Cheryl, you knew nothing about any of this. It's early in the morning, and not just the police, but also FBI broke into your home. Tell us what you went through. Wow, absolutely. Um, so that morning, I was making a cup of tea. I got up early that morning to make a hot cup of tea and to send one of my sons off to school early. I had prayer with him, and then I went back to have that cup of tea. And as I sat down to drink it, there was a very loud knock at the door. So I went to the door, and I'm like, who is it? Both of us said, who is it at the time? And when I opened the door, they said... Well, they said it was the, uh, they just said, come, we want to A, I'm sorry. So we opened the door, and when I we opened the door, it was the FBI, NYPD, guns drawn. Oh, my goodness. You talk about a shock. That was really a shock for me. And all I, I'm looking at my husband, I'm looking around, and the man says to me, stand back, ma'am. You don't know who this man is. And I'm just going to feel my hair standing up on the back of my neck when they said that. And so as I'm looking, Bobby's not looking at me, though, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, honey, what happened? What's going on? And, you know, I'm crying. There's tears. There's just a lot of things going on at that time. Well, but they wouldn't okay. let me get near to him. And they had him um, surrounded, and um, they said to him, what did they say, honey? What's your name? And I said, Bobby Love. And they said, no, your real name. Wow. And uh, wow. I knew this was the time that everything was going to fall down my whole life. And you had a couple of your kids at home at the time, too, who were equally shocked by all of this. But, Bobby, take us back a little bit earlier. You had been in prison for theft, right? Yes, I had went to uh, juvenile prison in... Um, in North Carolina and in Washington, D.C. And um, both times I, you know, did my best, but I didn't learn anything. And then I eventually come here to New York and, well, escape from jail in New York, I mean, Greensboro, and then come to New York. Wow. And you just started over. How did Walter Miller, the felon, become Bobby Love, the model citizen? Well, I would uh, get on the bus coming to New York, and a lady asked me, a uh, young girl had her own issues, and she said to me, what's your name? I just said, Bobby. And then while I'm here in New York and walking the streets and trying to find a, a job or trying to find somewhere to eat, I would walk into a Social Security office. And when I walked into the Social Security office, I asked the lady, I would like to apply for a Social Security card. And when I gave her my address, she said, um, oh, you never had a card? I said, no. And uh, she gave me a card right on the spot. Wow. Wow. You know, what's so crazy about your story is you were a model citizen as you moved on with your life. I mean, you two met in church. I mean, you get married, you have children. The police and the FBI said they didn't even want to come and, and arrest you, but they had to because whoever turned you in just kept bugging them week after week after week. But they saw that your life had turned around. Cheryl, your husband ends up in prison after all of this with a 10-year sentence. 
What went on with you during that time? Oh, my goodness. Well, I've always had a strong, we've always had a strong faith in God. And we were praying. We were just trusting in God, believing in his word, and asking him just to turn this whole thing around. And I would have visions of Bobby getting out. And, you know, we would continue, me and the children would continue to go to church. We would just praise God because we just felt like praising God, he's going to make a way for us. And he did. He turned it all around. How did you come to the place where you, having been deceived, really, for 30 years, could just choose to forgive? Well, I had to come to the realization, first of all, that this man who I've been married to all these years, he did deceive me. But I also felt in my heart that I had to forgive him because I loved Bobby. I didn't know those things that he did back in time with Walter Miller. I didn't even know the, of him being having a different name. I just knew who Bobby was to me. And he was a good husband. He was a, a wonderful father. And he was doing the things he was supposed to do. And then when I did find out everything, I said, my God, I said, God, you have been with him and you've been with us this whole time. You've been with us. Bobby was rehabilitating himself while he was out. And to me, that was just amazing. However, there were times, you know, in a marriage, you have good times and you have bad times. But I just trusted God. I said, Lord, I just need you to guide me and show me what to do. Show me the things to say even the things to say to my husband. And we would pray when he would call me from the prison. We would pray over the phone. I would pray with the children. He would always call me at a certain time. So we just tried to stay positive. And all the while, he was learning more about God while he was in the prison system also. So God has just been with us through the whole thing. It's a remarkable story of redemption, both of you. It's, um, I mean, God has really brought you to an amazing place and is using your story to touch many, many lives. I want to say we look forward to that movie. I want our viewers to know you can read more about this story in their brand new book. It's called The Redemption of Bobby Love, a story of faith, family, and justice. And it's available wherever books are sold. Thanks so much for being with us today. God bless you. Oh, thank, thank you, you for having us. And thank God you. bless you too. Yes.